Three weeks and two days to Election Day, Joe Biden in the driver's seat. A double-digit lead in national polling averages and a lopsided advantage. You see it right here in our CNN electoral outlets, outlook. Yes, President Trump can still win re-election, but the hill is steeper because he is struggling everywhere. And by struggling everywhere, if you look at this map, we have Joe Biden at 290 electoral votes right now in our outlook. It takes 270 to win. Dark blue, solid Biden. Light blue, lean Biden. Same for the president. The dark red lean is solid Trump. The light red, lean Trump. The president's in trouble right now. If he won every one of the yellow states here, those are the battlegrounds, right? Plus Maine, second congressional district. If he won them all, he would still be short. So the president needs to come back and come back in places that he won pretty handily in 2016. He must take Florida back without a doubt. See Arizona? We lead it, lean it right now for Joe Biden. That's trouble for the president, losing in places he won before. Let's just take a look at some of the dynamics right now. If you look at the battleground polling, yes, the president came back in 2016. But look at all these battleground polls. Here are just 10 from recent days. What do you notice here? Only one has a Trump lead, and that's Georgia plus one, which is essentially is a tie. The tide in the states, not just the national polls, is Biden's way right now. In part, Biden is protecting his lead because this is a phenomenon in this race. Biden is outspending the Republican incumbent president on television right now, including in the battleground states. Just since September 1st, nearly $50 million in Florida for Biden, $31 million for the president. You see the Pennsylvania numbers, North Carolina, Arizona, $19 million for the vice president, $9 million, a little over $9 million for President Trump. So as the president tries to come back, one of the dynamics, he's been unable to campaign the last week because of coronavirus. Joe Biden is spending more than him in these battleground states. And watch as they travel. A little sample here. The former vice president and the vice president yesterday in Florida. Joe Biden targeting the suburbs. Mike Pence trying to get senior citizens to vote Republican. How many more have to go under? How many more dreams have to be extinguished? because this president threw in the towel. Instead of focusing on your needs, he's still trying to take care of, take away your health care. Because of the cooperation of the American people, the leadership of our president, we're slowing the spread, we're protecting the vulnerable, and we're saving lives. And we're opening up America again. With us to share their reporting and insights this Sunday from the battleground states, Politico Florida correspondent Mark Caputo and Yvonne Winget Sanchez of the Arizona Republic. Uh, Mark, let me start with you. You had Mike Pence, the vice president, in the villages. It is a campaign stop we see in every cycle, both in state races, you see it all the time, and in, in, in these presidential races. But look at the numbers right now, Biden versus Trump. This is Quinnipiac numbers among senior citizens. Back in July, it was 49-46. The latest poll, it was 55-40. What is it in your battleground Florida that has senior citizens, a reliable voting electorate, breaking for Biden in, in the late days? Well, I'm not sure that Quinnipiac's polls are accurate. Let me just get that out there. I don't mean to trash them on Get it. They, they, here, they, but, tend to, uh, they tend to lean blue. I get you. They've had some problems. Uh, but coronavirus is the short answer to your question. Uh, you know, seniors are more likely to die and get hospitalized from it. And we're one of, if not the eldest state in the nation, certainly by uh, numbers and proportions of people together. So what you're seeing is Biden, more so than Hillary Clinton, and about as much as Barack Obama is taking a good share of the non-Hispanic white vote and the older vote. And if a Democrat gets shares of that, let's say 40% of whites, he's probably gonna win the state. And that's what you're seeing in the polling. But we've seen polling before say that the Democrat's gonna win. Then election day happens and it doesn't happen. And, and Yvonne, if you look out in Arizona right now, one of the challenges, you see these states, I, this is my ninth presidential campaign, so you always think of them as the last time. But your state is changing so fast, much like Florida. Across the Sun Belt, you're seeing you know, the growing suburbs, especially outside of Phoenix. I just want to look at Maricopa County. It's about 60% of the vote in the state because it's so big. If you go back to 2000, it was 914,000 votes, and President Bush won by 10. If you go to 2008, John McCain of Arizona was on the ballot, and you see the total votes cast just in Maricopa County growing to 1.2 million. In 2016, it was 1.5, and in 2020, it will likely be a higher number. And the revolt in the suburbs against President Trump, one of the reasons Arizona's leaning Biden now, right? That's one of the reasons. We do see some of the same effects that you're seeing in Florida with seniors. I mean, it looks to be just total cratering among seniors for uh, President Trump. And then you have Joe Biden alongside, you know, Cindy McCain, the late senator's wife, vouching for him and talking a lot about his character, particularly with people of faith, members of the Church of Latter-day, uh, Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. I mean, these are people who are really voting based on values. 
based on um, the president's handling of the coronavirus. And uh, we've got a lot of transplants who've brought their own political philosophies with them, oftentimes from liberal states. So uh, both of the candidates are really wrestling for the state's 11 electoral votes. And uh, Joe Biden has consistently led here. Uh, you mentioned the Cindy McCain uh, endorsement, number one, and now in a new TV ad. Let's look at a snippet. In the Senate, they disagreed on almost everything. They'd fight like hell on the floor, and then they'd go eat lunch together because they always put their friendship and their country first. Now more than ever, we need a president who will put service before self. It is interesting, including in your state with a, such a well-known figure as Cindy McCain. Joe Biden is closing, even in our polarized politics, where you think turnout of your base is so critical. He's closing with a message of unity. I want to, I want to be Republicans' president as well as Democrats' president. Yeah, and he's using Cindy in particular to reach um, disaffected Republican women voters, independent women voters, people who maybe voted for Trump in 2016, but are really starting to have second chances. And she's really, or second thoughts about the president. She's really trying to give them a permission structure to, to break away from their party. Uh, and Mark, your state is one of the most complicated states, Florida, because it is so different. Uh, well, you know, uh, yeah. if the, far, you know say the old cliche is the farther south you go, the further north you get, uh, meaning, you know, retirees from the north in Broward, in Palm Beach, uh, in Miami and the like. Uh, walk through some of the complications. If you're a candidate who is trailing late in a race, how, how hard it is because you have different constituencies depending on where you are in the state. Okay, yeah. So basically, we have 10 major media markets in 67 counties. When you go to the southeast of Florida, it's culturally like the northeast because of I-95. But Miami-Dade, the largest county in the far southeast, is basically the capital of Latin America. On the southwest coast, it's essentially culturally like the Midwest because of I-75. Uh, and then you have this area called the I-4 corridor, which swings from Tampa through Orlando and over east into Daytona Beach, which is basically the swing area of the swing state. It's kind of like everywhere USA. So you have all of these different constituencies, and then you have North Florida, which is the farther north you go, the deeper south you are. It's basically the deeper south. Now in Florida, we also have about 30 days of early voting by absentee ballot. And you can't compare 2016 to 2020 exactly because Republicans listening to the president who's kind of demonized mail-in voting are not casting their ballots and say they want to vote in person. But it's still a really, really big deal that Democrats are turning in absentee ballots at such a high rate. 841,000 Democrats have already voted. It's like eight times what they did at this point in 2016. That compares to 483,000 Republicans. So the Democrats are really voting in big numbers. Now, when the uh, in-person early voting period begins later in the month, we'll start to see if Republicans are going to catch up and they're just going to show up that way. Uh, just one last point in 2016, uh, Hillary Clinton actually went in to Election Day with a 247,000 vote lead. The Republicans showed in such force that she wound up, she wound up losing the state by 113,000. So we've seen this play before a little, but we just haven't seen Democrats pour it on the way they're pouring it on now. Pouring it on at the moment. And let's, let's, in Arizona, is the, is the early voting and uh, is, is, is it similar? Is that what you're seeing? That's what we're seeing. I mean, we, we've only just begun. We have, I don't think we have um, a good enough sense of what the trend lines are going to be, but we do expect Democratic surges across the state, um, even outside of Maricopa County. So we'll be watching those closely and reporting on them on the Arizona Republic. Yvonne and Mark, grateful for your help from the Battleground States Thank this you. Sunday. It's hard to understand a campaign so here in Washington. Thank you.